What's up, YouTube? Knife the Edge here again. Got another pretty cool little uh, review for you of a knife that was uh, sent to me courtesy of Jake Anderson for a channel giveaway. Been carrying it a couple of days and decided to um, do a full review, full thoughts, all that good stuff. There's some good, some bad here. Uh, we'll get through all of it here in just a second before I get into it. <clears throat> Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the like button. It's easy. Go ahead and do it right now. I'll wait. Um, right down there, like button. Hit the notification bell if uh, you're interested in listening to me ramble more and more about this or that, knives in general. Um, I do sharpenings, I do, um, you know, live streams Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. If you're new to the channel, I do have a lot of newer people in. Uh, seems like the channel is growing more and more. I really appreciate everyone that's coming in new, and I appreciate everyone that's been around, man. It's crazy. For me to even think of myself as uh you know having newer or older people <laughs> that are you know subscribed to me it, it's insane great community here's an example of that you know appreciate it jake anderson um so yeah hit the subscribe button if you're interested in patreon it's linked down below in the description um i think the tours the the uh, the tiers start at 2.99 a month and go up from there i really do try to get a patreon video out once a week so i'm actually slacking right now <laughs> i need to kind of update it but um definitely thank you guys thanks everyone for the support and without further ado this one is a cjrb uh riff cjrb riff get a good close-up look at her Pretty cool little pattern right there on the G10. Alright, so this one made by CJRB is, uh, I believe it's discontinued actually. They're available in full on Amazon right now, but I think they're eliminating this line. I'm not 100% sure on that. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. So, anyway, let's go ahead before i get into my full thoughts we'll go ahead and do all the specs get that out the way it's what i usually try to do anyway so overall length from the tip of the blade all the way to the butt of the handle you're looking right at about eight and a quarter inches um blade length let's see overall blade length you are looking at three and three quarter if you go back here to where the um, that little kind of sharpening toil is and uh, sharpened edge you're looking huh eh, just under that right three and five ace maybe you know so definitely every bit of the definition on this channel anyway of a full-size knife what I would call a full-size knife go ahead and get the calibers out here check the thickest part of the spine 144 thousandths behind the edge you're looking at 19 and a half thousandths handle thickness a little over half an inch which is pretty acceptable for that size of a knife i would have to say just like most they always say not too thick not too thin all right let's go ahead and do some size comparisons this will really give you a kind of idea what you're looking at you know of course uh spider co paramilitary 2 all right, so you can tell right there, it's definitely a full-size knife, right? <clears throat> Pair of three. All right, put those up. Next up, the Rat Brothers Ontario Knives Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Knives Rat Model 2. Definitely closer to the Rat 1. And last but not not least, the cold steel knives, 8010, and the Demco knives, 8020.5. So definitely closer, um, at least in length, sharpened edge, all that to the 8010. Not anywhere near as bulky, might I add. All right, so. Got the size comparisons. Let's go ahead and do the weight. Got the scale. Now this is one section where I think I'm gonna find an issue with this one. It is kind of heavy. There's no, if you look down in there, solid 
pieces, right, of steel liners. There's no uh, milling. So, 5.3 ounces. Now that is definitely over the ounce and inch ratio. That doesn't really bother me too much that it's over the ounce and inch ratio. I like heavy knives and stuff. Um, you know, but that is a factor to consider. Being as high as G10 handle, they could have milled out a little bit, probably eliminated at least half an ounce, maybe even a whole ounce there, you know. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. Now, let's go ahead and get out the pants, get out the old blue jeans. See what we're dealing with here as far as carry. With that 5.3 ounce blade for knife. So yeah, CJRB uh, deep carry clip disappears in the pocket. No issues there. I never really had too many issues with CJRB's clips. <clears throat> they don't bill out at this point as much as a Civivi tends to do it. Yeah, I like that action, man. Deploys really good. So, got the size comparisons, the weight, the measurements, all that stuff. Oh, let me put it up. Well, I'll wait on that one. Let's go ahead and do hardware check. This is a T6, I believe. I have to double check that. Yeah, T6. All right, got my NAS driver here. Not trying to brag, but it is pretty sweet. T6 on the hardware. And let's get out the Weeha. T8 on the pivot. Ooh, it is a captive pivot, so points for that. Tighten it a little bit. All right, so body screws are all T6. Pivot's a T8. And let me double check this. Yeah. Pocket clip screws are also T6. So, it is cool that this knife has a captive pivot. That helps with disassembly. Um, T8's fine for the pivot, but I really wish these body screws, you know, pocket clip screws, yeah, I mean, that'd be cool if they were T8. Big cool T6s didn't exist, but uh, on the body, you're kind of looking for T8, so that would be, a, you know, definitely a lot better if that was the case. So, that's pretty much it as far as hardware goes. Uh, I like the blade shape on this one. I like that fuller that kind of goes out to nowhere, that kind of end, you know, just ends like that. I don't know why. Uh, the Valona, it reminds me of the Valona, kind of like that, the Megaron knife with that... Uh, aspect of it i think that's pretty cool although this you know of course is a different blade shape and uh wider fuller you know um good jumping up top ergonomically this thing's really comfortable choke back like that perfectly fine i mean you feel locked in totally secure like that choked up uh not bad you know underneath the trigger like that but uh choked up if you put your finger there you're gonna cut yourself you know if your knife's sharp so choke back kind of forces you into that position which is fine you know i mean normally i like options but that is not too big of a deal because or to me anyway um because you are definitely fully comfortable and locked in i wear a large size glove uh I have what I would consider regular size hands, and I am fully locked in right there. So that's a good thing. Choke back. I mean, you could choke back if you wanted to, but right there is pretty much where you're going with this one. Jumping up top again, you know, very comfortable. Uh, the corners, everything's well rounded. There's nothing that's like really cutty or anything like that. Again, the weight on this one just kind of throws me off. You know, why didn't they mill it out? That would be pretty cool the action as far as the button lock goes is pretty good plunge lock there's no um you know it survived a light spine white test for me which is good enough in my opinion I did just tighten up the pivot a little bit it is still centered pretty good yeah centering is pretty good now, the one thing I've found kind of carrying this one a little bit that I don't like about it, aside from the weight issue, is oh, right there. 
So whenever you do that, it can come out. Detent's too weak. Uh, you can adjust that. That can be adjusted a little bit, but I really prefer it to come from you know the factory like that. That'd be pretty cool. Don't like my my knives to open whenever I fling them out, even if they got a. You know, I mean, look at this one. This one's got a super heavy blade, way heavier than this one. It's not doing it. You know, that's not a common thing. Or it is common, I guess, but it's not something that's supposed to happen. You know, don't tell me just because the knife blade's larger that it's supposed to fling out like that. The MSI does that as well. Something that I wish it wouldn't do. But then again, to me, really, when you think about it, is it that much of an issue? Because whenever you shake it a little bit, it's not coming out, you know. Okay, even shake it a lot of bit and it's not coming out. But if you give it a good hard, you know, fake oh, uh, fake shake or whatever, a good hard shake like this, it's coming out. So that's something for you to decide for yourself. Yeah, it, I, I don't know if it's my OCD that makes it bother me or, or what, but uh, that is definitely something to be aware of. So on the negative side, T6 body screws, the fact that it has a weaker detent and the weight, the weight could be uh, better. On the positive side, good steel. Uh, let's see. Let's compare it also up next to its brothers. CJRB Pyrite Lite. And the CJRB Pyrite buoy Rose Gold. There's two CJRBs up next to it. Now, this one is $64.99. That's crazy. That's uh, the final negative for me on that one. $64.99 for this. This is AARPM9 and G10. This is a ARPM9 stainless. This is a ARPM9 and uh, indetrimal plastic. Why is this one 65 bucks and this one's 30? You can get this one on Amazon right now. And this is a wonderful knife. I would definitely recommend this one over this one if they were the same price even. Even if they were the same price. But and this one as well. This one I think is 60 bucks maybe something like that. I don't think it's more than 60. I could be wrong on that. Correct me in the comments, of course. But why is this one 65 and this one a little less than that? And this one, you could get two of these for this. That's crazy. You know, I mean, the, the it's it's insane. You got steel liners not milled out and G10. Is G10 really that big of a deal to you? Then, then you know, that maybe, maybe think about buying this over that or that. But... I wouldn't consider it so anyway uh yeah price is is probably the main thing in case you can't tell so t6 body screws easily whipped out and also the price or the negatives the positives i would say on this the fuller i love that fuller i love the deployment I love the blade shape. ARPM9 is not a terrible steel. It's, it's a budget steel, but it's not it's not super terrible. Um, Larry and Thomas just did the whole thing on ARPM9, the whole investigation and getting it down to the atomic level almost. So definitely check that out if you're interested in ARPM9 because he knows a heck of a lot more than I do. And this has been a pretty long review, but I wanted to kind of go in depth and explain my feelings fully on this one, because this it, this could be a, an awesome knife. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to drill some holes, swap T8 instead of T6, and kind of torque down that D10 a little bit, you know, or something. But um, as it stands right now, the fact that this is 65, this is 30, that that kind of blows my mind, really, because I I think that's a lot better. But anyway, um, not a bad knife, good action. It feels really good. You know, it's really smooth. I mean, other than the fact that it will fling open with that heavy blade, 
it is super smooth it is reliable as far as i can tell in my experience i have spine whacked it i've used it and carried it um you know it, it definitely feels substantial in the hand i like the well-roundedness the ergonomics and uh the fuller like i said that open fuller it's pretty cool so uh yeah that's pretty much it y'all i really appreciate everyone watching you guys are awesome hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you're interested and have a good rest of your day